So anyway, now I've advertised BDNF sufficiently. I hope that if I ran a PR campaign, you would all want to go out and buy some. And the point being now, uh, no, you cannot buy some, but how can you get it? Well, one way of getting it is to exercise. So as you can see, here we have some controls. Uh, this is the level of the messenger RNA uh, for BDNF. Uh, this is for another substance which we're only going to mention briefly called CREP and one called synapsin. Uh, these two substances primarily support plasticity, uh, the uh, changes of the synaptic structure, etc. BDNF pr promotes both the survival of neurons and the plasticity. But anyway, we're going mainly to talk about BDNF. These are controls that are left passive. These have exercised for three days, and these have exercised for seven days. So as you can see, uh, three days of exercise and even more so, a week of exercise will boost the production of brain-derived nootropic factor, and for that matter, of CREP and synapsin. So these substances that are clearly in many experiments shown to be of importance relative to learning, memory, uh, survival of neurons, etc., are boosted by physical activity. Now, this is uh, another slide that we should not spend all too much time on. Uh, what I primarily want to show is that there's a particular uh, receptor, uh, this one here, for BDNF. So when brain-derived neurotrophic factor is produced, and is produced both by glial cells and by neurons, uh, it affects this uh, receptor, uh, which got a number of consequences. Uh, one of them is actually to boost the production of CREP, one of those that we talked about before. Another is to boost the production of uh, BDNF itself. So actually, via this, BDNF can be uh, self-reinforcing. We have a positive feedback loop here. Uh, the production in the cell of BDNF will actually, uh, via this receptor, boost even more production of BDNF. So once you get this kind of positive loop started, uh, you're likely to get some good results. It also, of course, means that you're likely to have some neuroscientists very interested in this receptor, uh, because in case it is true that positive effects of exercise actually has something to do with BDNF, blocking this receptor uh, should be a way of preventing it. So in a minute, you're going to see some results in which this receptor has been blocked, and let's see what's happening under such circumstances. Um, well, first of all, uh, you have here uh, some animals that are exercising. You have some that are just having brain injury. Um, you have some here that are exercising. Um, and you have here some that, maybe I should just say, this is the uh, protein levels. These are some of the consequences. This is BDNF. And once you block this receptor, you get a reduction. So it goes via BDNF. That's clear in this case. Here are some functional results showing pretty much the same. You have, again, some animals that are lesioned, and this is a cognitive task, this time a place learning in a water maze. And you have here the shams. These are normal animals, just control operated. Uh, so this is the level. Um, this is the criterion score. This is, in short, a number indicating how well they, they solve the task. The higher, the better. Uh, these are animals that are, well, first of all, uh, you have here some lesioned animals. So as you can see, here is the consequence of the lesion. They are clearly impaired. But here you have some animals that are given uh, some time in a running wheel. They are exercising. Uh, they have the same lesion as these. So the lesion is the same, but they're exercising. And as you can see, there's a very clear and significant improvement of the task performance when you exercise. However, if you block that receptor, you have, again, the same level of exercise as these. But in spite of that, they are down to the level of those that do not exercise. So if you block the receptor, which is the receptor mediating the consequences of BDNF, you get uh, pretty much down to the level of no exercise at all. 
This is obviously not saying that exercise is only having effects via BDNF, but it's a very clear indication that without the availability of the BDNF receptor, you are unlikely uh, to get useful results of the training. So both neurochemically and functionally, you do get uh, an indication that exercise will work uh, in brain injury via BDNF. Uh, here are some of the consequences, again, of those substances that are boosted. BDNF plays a very central role, uh, actually promoting plasticity, also in, in affecting both synapsin, which in itself promotes various kinds of plasticity, and CREP, which also uh, promotes that. Now, again, question being, BDNF, how do we boost it? Well, we already had some indications. Here are just uh, one more. We have, again, exercise here. When we regionally, within the brain, block uh, the energy changes within particular parts, you can see, uh, although they exercise at the same level, uh, you can see a blockage of that effect on BDNF. So you need the neural consequences of that. Now let's see in normals. I'm not going to talk all too much about the normals, but we do have, of course, some interesting results here. These are the BDNF levels in various parts of the hippocampus. A lot of the attention goes to the hippocampus for many reasons. First of all, research tradition. The hippocampus, which is part of the limbic system, it's a, a structure uh, here deep in the temporal lobe, means actually the seahorse, because it does bear a very, very superficial resemblance to a seahorse, uh, shape-wise. Um, you probably need a very, very vivid imagination to tell so, but that seahorse is very much studied in many instances. We know that it plays a significant role in learning and memory, uh, and lots of the animal models actually focus almost exclusively on the hippocampus. And lots of the studies looking whether, for instance, exercise will influence BDNF have almost exclusively looked at the uh, levels of BDNF within the hippocampus. Now, that might actually be a problem because you tend there to believe, maybe wrongly, that factors influencing BDNF in the hippocampus would influence the rest of the brain in the same ways. There's no saying that is the case. Um, and actually, I'm going to show a little bit later uh, reasons not to believe so. So here you can see that compared to those that are passive, we have boost of BDNF production within various parts of the hippocampus. And furthermore, if we take a learning task here, um, this are, these are the first six, day, six days of acquiring, uh, again, a spatial task in a water maze. The red ones are those exercising, and as you can see, they do have uh, a quicker learning curve. So exercise does, in the normals, improve uh, cognitive learning. 